Welcome, Teresa Kotick. Welcome to the Black Knights Festival, the 20th edition, uh, with the world premiere of Home is Here, an Austrian film, uh, a film, uh, a debut of yours that you did after studying as an artist, as training uh, as uh, an actor, um, and developing this with a clear notion of, of a clear cut artistic vision. Home is Here. I would like to ask you as you. Um, have so many, so many actors with a migration background coming from different parts, and we'll go, we'll go into more detail. Um, what is what is a very broad question? What is home for you today? I knew this is going to come. Yeah. Um, um, very difficult question. I think it um, it is not really something we can define from a geographic uh, background. But uh, because the outside always changes and it's gonna change, uh, it is truly something you have to find in yourself. And this is something I really wanted to pursue with a very subtle, clear film that also requires more images and communications via gestures or rituals uh, than dialogues. Because I think home is something we can't really define, so it's hard to find words. Home is something in which we move quite automatically, maybe? If you feel okay uh, somewhere with uh, good people and a well surrounding and something we truly feel in, to in, in tune with, I would say uh, intuition is something I call home because then we can really uh, pursue a path that we can uh, visualize for ourselves. And I think that is nowadays more something uh, to find home in than somewhere else. We are in a world where we constantly change. I mean, we are here in Tallinn now with a film that I've uh, shot in Austria with international cast. So um, I truly feel at home now because I, I actually succeeded with something that I started to realize five years ago. So uh, I'm very honored to be here with this uh, festival. You were thinking. Uh, you were talking about your international cast. One uh, cast member, Stipe Ercek, who was Croatian-born and, uh, of course, grew up as an actor in Germany. You have also in the main female lead a Swedish actress. Something that surprised me very much because her mother, again, is played by a Czech actress, actually speaking Czech. So, so talk a bit about how you uh, brought together this fabric of people with so diverse backgrounds. I think it happened um, in the casting process. I knew that because I, uh, I learned and I studied acting in England, uh, that there is a very special craft being educated or brought through acting in England. So a British actor has a different craft, I would say, than a German-speaking actor. Or um, it's hard to find this kind of craft, I think, in Europe. And I, I knew that for this kind of film, it's really um, problematic or even the challenge. I'd say m it's more a challenge to find actors who have this craft and are able to succeed with no dialogue, almost no dialogue, um, in an image and transport the, the, uh, the story. So I was casting in England, basically, and I was um, with an agency in London and I was ca uh, casting actually a very famous actor for uh, the male part. And uh, he declined after we've had a broad discussion about the script um, due to time and everything else. But then um, they suggested Anna for, for the role of Hannah. And I was very surprised because she was a sort of character I thought like, oh, she is very, very close to actually the character I wrote. And it didn't matter that she was Swedish or any other nationality because the craft is the craft. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to go with that. And um, and so I knew that, okay, if she is Swedish, then I have to uh, find for the male part somebody who is maybe German speaking. But it turned out that Steve is actually c from Croatian background. And I really enjoyed that because um, I think also as a director, you have to confront yourself with certain questions during the shooting process. And he was someone who definitely defined that background very much so. And, um, and he is uh, a 
amazingly talented actor who said that um, sometimes singing is even the best way to find your mother tongue and mother language and to be truly yourself, you know. And I think that for them it was a challenge to be in a film where it really requires to be the truly yourself and the truly best of yourself. So I'm sorry, a very long answer to a short question, but I, uh, but I think it comes through the craft, yes. Well, he's all but singing, I would say, in his role here that he embodies now. Um, he is um, a guy, maybe to paraphrase it a bit, caught in a wonderfully luxurious way of living, being a successful businessman, probably having whatever he wanted, a part of that being a big house. And what we have and what, what you explained already a bit uh, throughout most of the films from him is moving through the spaces in a very self-assured way. So maybe you want to expand a bit about what he gave you or what kind of hints you gave him uh, of how he should move. Um, I think I, I would love to answer this by a question a production designer during shooting asked me. It was lovely because it actually brought the whole process into one sentence. I was just preparing the day and she came up to me and asking like, Teresa, I'm just interrupting you very briefly, but tell me, is Max having his coffee with or without sugar? <laughs> And that was actually the sentence you'd love to hear as a writer-director, you know, because that defines how a character moves through space. If somebody is actually occupied with himself and doesn't care so much about the surrounding and the people around him, he would just pour the coffee, take the coffee, put maybe the spoon there, just walk into his office and that's it. But he actually takes time and he takes the sugar and he takes the spoon and he goes around mixing his coffee and he walks into the office. So there is something going on with him. And that is what we actually um, discussed thoroughly, uh, that Max seems to be kind of isolated and almost like in a prison in his own house, but something makes him be on the way to somewhere else. So there is something going on in his inner process. And um, that was very important to us so that Max is not this kind of very um, turned down inner person, but he is processing something, and that needs to be seen. One could argue that he's driven by whatever outer forces. He's possessed by outer forces. He's possessed by material, <laughs> in the broadest sense. And um, the other character, uh, the female lead, is possessed by the inner world. What, is it is it too simple to put it together like that? But she's she's etheric. I would try to sum up it with that word. She she moves in an, with an inner big big inner space. Um, she does, and so does Max as well. I think they have both longings and yearnings, and I think that um, the only thing is that Hannah, although she's younger, she already knows that there is a way out. Although, first of all, there is a way in into his house. So she has to go through this and she has to cross the border to find out that she actually never needed to cross this border because it is in herself, mm -hmm. you know. So she has a very, very rich inner world and that is what I would call again intuition that um, explains you um, what you want in your life and she is a very clear person about that. She uh, leaves the outside world outside and she defines that very much as an artist. And I think she's also processing that. And I think this is what artists do. They first of all have to experience art in order to one day um, perceive themselves as artists. So she's going through this process, yes. As you said, she's breaking into his house and by that they are starting a process of communication, bringing a kind of a more yeah, more life to each of the characters. They feel more alive uh, uh, by, by clinging to each other. Um, let's talk a bit about the house. Two things. Um, well, there are a lot of Austrian films. There are very few films in Innsbruck. And then within this framework of <laughs> shooting in Innsbruck, you found a very special house. So how come both decisions of city and that specific building? Um, actually, um, I was living in England, and then I... Um, went back to Austria and when I went back to Innsbruck, not to Vienna. And I was very much surprised that everybody perceives 
the city from the inside. So either you know walking through the city and the town, which is beautiful, or going up the mountains and then you look down, which is perfectly fine. But what I really encountered that uh, it is interesting to look where people don't look at, you know, like the Olympic Village uh, where Hannah is living. It's something that is so important for the city because the Olympics were twice in the town, uh, but no, no one would live there because it's like the outskirts and who can afford it lives in the city, not outside the city, not there. And I just really, because maybe, uh, because I was living in England, I really love the tower houses there. And there are a beautiful landscape itself, you know, not only the mountains around. So I was very much interested in showing that part of the city. And then there is this extreme side to it that there are beautiful, beautiful houses, private houses on the outsides yeah. and villas. So um, this is a private house we found outside of Innsbruck. And um, we were really lucky because we found it in the last days in the preparation. And it is a um, private house of a man who owns a company and he was absolutely open to us to be shooting there. And it was really fantastic because he was actually going to work in the morning and we sat in to do the shooting and he would come back in the evening and we would kind of retrieve again, you know. So it was a common, you know, it was like Max and Hannah basically, you mm -hmm. know, we were in the house while he was not oh, in the house. <laughs> I was invited, you know, so he knew about us. <laughs> so that was the difference. But uh, that was a very nice experience, Perfect. yes. Of course, we have to talk about set dressing there because uh, this is a very controlled film and it is best seen in, in the set dressing of... Uh, um, let's keep to that villa, to that house. There is a, um, artwork or, 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 or art on the walls that will replicate in books. Everything is tone in tone. Uh, also, the office uh, of the businessman we see has this kind of grayish tone. You are a trained artist, so how close was the connection to your set designer, production designer, or were you mainly the production designer yourself in that case? I had a very long uh, discussion with my production designer from early on. I think you have to start when you write or when you are in the first stages to have discussions with the departments. And we were very sure that we want to start off with cool shades and get slightly, slightly warmer. And so if you watch the film very carefully, we are really getting warmer yeah. with the clothes, with the settings. And, um, but it was very clear for us to make sure that um, it is about everyday life's routines and gestures where you're stuck. We have to also stuck to, uh, stick to a very, very specific design and uh, keep it in the background. So almost the people are also in the background. Mm -hmm. um, because they kind of have to evolve themselves out of the setting. And it happens to both the characters. So that was very clear that we want to actually have this process too. So we had this process on many, many levels in the departments as well as in the story, as well as in the shooting process with the camera. And with the process of actually Hannah becoming an artist and actually escaping the house through, you know, having um, put all the photographs on herself and then taking it off. So, um, taking off the house, actually. Yeah. Um, that was very, very clear for us that we need a very close connection to the departments. And the other thing is, I wanted to use those photographs, the artwork that, is, that uh, are hanging on the walls. Uh, it is the original work by Ronnie Horn. Mm -hmm. Ronnie Horn is a very important photographer for me. And she explored through many, many series, photo series and years, how the POV changes of a person mm -hmm. and when you start actually to see the person. So um, the series we've chosen, like the, the, these are the, the birds from the back, mm -hmm. just seen from the back, is something that reflects Hannah's uh, journey in the house, that she constantly you know, tries to photograph something until she finally photographs herself. Yeah. And maybe the last question, uh, another deep inspiration must have been for you personally as well for, uh, for, uh, as for your female lead, Emily Dickinson, as a poet. A poet that, uh, I looked it up, I have to say, I never read Emily Dickinson personally. It's a pity because uh, uh, the, the few poems I could read now were really interesting. This is about a woman that uh, basically stayed inside to explore her inner world. 
perceiving not going out of the house of the the real kind of freedom in a way. Would you agree? I or think was that it was an inspiration. Um, I think the only freedom you can have is when you release the freedom in yourself. And that is what she has done. She she found the freedom when she was um, she made the decision with 30, you know, yeah, when she was 30 years old and she said like she's she's going to stay in the room where she's writing and where she's sleeping. Terence Davis just did a film about her. It was beautiful. Um, yes, yes. And it was just at the Viennale now in Vienna. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that um, both ways, Emily Dickinson invented an own language. She, she invented a staccato of, uh, of uh, words, um, exploring actually an own world. So she put something in words, what actually couldn't have been processed if she was somewhere else. So I think this, is, this was a high inspiration for me, you know, that something that uh, you know, is being retrieved from the inside can be processed on the outside at some point. Thank you for being here with the Black Knights Film Festival, Teresa Kotick. The film is here uh, in the first feature competition and it's actually playing today. Thank you once again. Thank you.